Okay, it's time to commit. 2024 is the year for prioritizing yourself. Begin your new smile journey with Byte, and you could start seeing results in just two to three weeks. Just order your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95 at Byte.com. Byte clear liners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces, plus they offer financing options, accept eligible insurance, and you could pay with your HSA, FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. Hey guys, and welcome to Criminality, the podcast where we know loving reality TV isn't a crime. And today we have a very special guest. Rebecca is out of town, so that's sad, but we have the Amy Archer, and I only know how to say your name as Amy Archer, not just Amy. I know, everybody does (laughs) it. It's so perfect, though. It's like Mary Payne, right? (laughs) Yes. Uh, And she is from Little Miss Recap, the podcast Rebecca and I fell in love with late last year and are totally obsessed with and listen to all the time. And we're so happy to have you. I'm so happy you're here, Amy. Oh, thank you so much. I completely (laughs) invited myself onto your show. As we did on yours. I was like, Rebecca, we got to ask her. (laughs) We loved having you guys on well thank you (laughs) and so I really wanted to do something else with you and I didn't realize that we had to murder Rebecca and get her out of the picture for it to happen but here we are you know that's in the past that's a whole different thing (laughs) uh we will survive hashtag this Mm -hmm. is a crisis but um I think we're gonna I think we're gonna be okay but she is missed and where I'm really sad she's gonna be missed is I just realized listening to you guys and I told Rebecca this you guys are big Enneagram people and Rebecca and I are as well so I was not okay Amanda really got me into it Mm -hmm. and Amanda and I are the same we are we are nines yes you yes, guys are not nice. are, are kind of the diplomat, the people pleaser, a hundred percent. Absolutely. So Rebecca's a four. She's a creative, you know, okay. dreamer, schemer, all not schemer, dreamer. And I am a six, which means I'm terrified of everything. And uh, oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> I've had my computer up for like an hour just to make sure it was ready for this recording. So that's like okay. So like if I want a job done well and done right, I give it to you. Absolutely. If yeah, okay. I will right. gotcha. nothing will go wrong. My entire life is chaos, but like <laughs> I keep it going. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, still here. I get you. So we'll have to have you on another time to talk Enneagram because literally Rebecca is the most well versed person in it. And- See, I I kind of grew up like my grandmother was a widow at uh forty Ooh. and she became very interested in horoscopes okay so you know most people in my area i grew up in a very like roman catholic Mm -hmm. traditional area most people would go to church on sundays with their grams Mm -hmm. i would get my palm read and get my chart done by my my gram like that so i grew up kind of believing in that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. so enneagrams just i believe fall right into line with that yeah because i'm also libra with the scorpio we we share a birthday we do share a birthday, yeah, which is amazing. It is. So I kind of grew up with all of that. So I, I'm I'm into it. Any kind of personality test, you know, I'll take it. Yeah. Whatever. See, as a six, I don't want to believe anything. And so. Okay. Well, as a Gen Xer, I don't want to believe it. True. Anything, <laughs> I do that. believe this. <laughs> yeah. So like it was very difficult for me. My sister showed it to me and I finally, I took a test. I took it and I got like, I think I got a nine. And my sister was like, I think you should take it again because I think you're a different one. And I got a six and I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm worried about everything all the time. So no more Enneagram talk because I really think Rebecca will lose her mind when she hears this. So we didn't include her. But Mm -hmm. Amy, we're not really talking crime a little. We're talking, well. We're talking about crimes against humanity. (laughs) As soon as I said that, I was like, nope, the biggest crime of them all, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cody Wynn Brown and Cody Wynn Brown Cody Wynn Brown and the chaos the agent of chaos that he is <laughs> how did you come into sister wives because I feel like we've all had a journey yeah I I've watched it from the beginning same yeah and in fact I have not re-watched it until Ooh, recently okay so like of course you know the big moments you see in clips on TikTok right. and YouTube all the time. So like I'm familiar with it. Right. But for Amanda and I over on Little Miss Recap, we're doing a rewatch. That's the first time I'm really intently right rewatching it. 
Um, so I did watch it from the beginning. I think I was like one of those lamos it around that time period. Like my girls were young. Yeah, yeah. So I was home all the time. So I was watching just TLC stuff in general. Yes. And just felt I loved Big Love. That's how HBO. I that's how I yes. came to it. Big Love was popular and all of a sudden TLC yes. has this thing. I'm like totally gonna mm-hmm. watch it. That's exactly mm-hmm. that's my pipeline. That's amazing. And and I fell under the spell of Cody Wynn Brown. Everyone did. And if you watched we all thought early he was on, a decent human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. thought the state needs to leave them alone. They just need to leave, let him be happy and in love with all four of his wives <laughs> equally. <laughs> is one. Yes. Yes. We all allowed ourselves to believe. So we are recapping. But I use that word lightly because Amy is the recapper and I am here. Um so I'll be leading it, but please nobody leave a review. We did one recap and the only review we got on it was recap question mark ha 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 and i was like but that's oh, not no. our job <laughs> we said we, we were terrible <laughs> we recapped so you're right when i recap i go pretty but i'm a writer like that's what i do yeah, yeah. i like to write summaries and be funny oh yeah but when we recapped a documentary with ace and caitlin from um sister wives love should be multiplied not divided we didn't really talk about the documentary and we got a few reviews that were like, why didn't you talk about the documentary? You were you had Ace on there (laughs) and he gets a little off topic. I used to listen to him when he had his other show. So I didn't realize it was the same person. He used to have a show about like secrets or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I listened to that and then I kept hearing Ace, Ace, Ace. And then I was like, I got to look. This has got to be the same guy. Same like sense of humor. And it was. So I guess I'm an OG uh, Ace fan. Um, That's cool. that out there. Yeah. Okay, so we are recapping Season 2, Episode 10, Gambling on the Future. And I took the little summary. With the family moved to Las Vegas only three days away, Cody tells the younger children that they will be leaving their home in Utah forever. Despite some protest, the Browns begin to pack. But when the media gets a hold of the news, plans turn into panic. And that is where my Enneagram 6 self is like, Yep, this is <laughs> this is me. I love how they're calling TMZ the media. <laughs> Do you like how Christine in this episode is like TMZ is a the media? I'm like the media. Yeah, it's like CNN's TV. not camped up outside your house, guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> and they're giving you 24 hours. Uh, anyway, we'll get yeah. into it. But yeah. mm-hmm. so anyway, the intro of the show is really just showing how much Cody loves these wives, right? Like. Yeah, we're getting like the vignette grayish scale, you know, showing everybody and how how much he loves everyone very equally. Um, He talks about the city of Lehigh finishing their investigation. So the the whole thing, if you haven't watched and if you're listening to us, you have because we basically broke you all down to watch this. Um, (laughs) What was it? Polygamy was outlawed in Utah. And then after they became public that's when they find out they're being investigated right is that right am I remembering yeah correctly? Okay. I think it was just was it decrim so now it's decriminalized right, right? I feel like okay. it, now it's like a fine right yeah. like I don't know when we met those other family one of those seasons the ones right. where the wives all look alike and are yes. related <laughs> yeah and those wives fall in line not they like Cody's do. wives no Cody's wives are total <laughs> yeah they're they're just doing their own thing so yeah they they think for themselves they do which yeah. seems like the better idea um mm-hmm. and how we are got where we are um so we're in we're in the living room I guess of the big house right like yeah I, since I didn't watch before and after I couldn't remember first thing you see feet everywhere these browns love having their dogs out i'll never understand it yes they do with confidence too and you know a camera crew is there do you are you comfortable in your house with bare feet because i'm not i wear socks all the time i'm wearing socks right now i wear socks i'm wearing slippers right now yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah if i am sitting on the couch and my shoe nobody cares about this but if i'm on the couch and my shoes are off Mm -hmm. i put them on to walk to the kitchen absolutely why wouldn't you are you a monster it's Um, weird i think i'm also getting older so just like walking barefoot you know i'm i'm risking a few things especially like my ankle health um there you go yeah Mm -hmm. but they these people they love to have them out in utah where it's like snowing half the time and also this is the first point where we hear a cough and this cough becomes a never another member of the family did you hear it yes yes constant like patient zero is somewhere in there i can't imagine being the audio guys 
I wonder if patient this. zero is the cold sore patient zero oh, as well. Yes, I did see Robin yeah. and Logan both uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. showing one on the side. Um, it's making its rounds. It, it is. And this mm-hmm. is definitely ground zero for them. Um, so we're we're in this family meeting and Cody says, of course, who likes being a family, which is. <laughs> it's it's enraging. It's enraging. He is so Who's gonna say stupid. no? I, well, Garrison did not raise his hand, so maybe <laughs> that was me. And in pipes like season 18, Christine raising her hand. I don't As, like being a family. Get me out of here. She was too busy holding truly to be able to get her arm up during that. The, the um, national thing. treasure that is truly. I yes. know you have a true love. God, I love that truly. kid. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. And seeing She's little amazing. truly was so cute like her little q-tip head yeah i love it so much what i like about truly is she is like she just wants to be her own person she is a desperate cry for attention she's just screaming for attention and she's wearing weird shirts Mm -hmm. and dyeing her hair and just being who she is unapologetically and that was me when I was like 12 years old. So I love I get that it. so much. I mm-hmm. I did not want, I'm very tall, so I wanted to like get in between people. I didn't want to be okay. seen. Yeah, I, I, I had the opposite. But if anyone can, you know, do those transition lenses, it's our girl. It's her. Truly. It's her. It, literally mm-hmm. the only person. So he goes right into it. He says, you know, we're a special family. He says they want to keep the family together and nothing can break it. Skip ahead a few yeah. seasons. Yeah. Um, and then he goes right into it. He says, because of these circumstances, we're moving to Las Vegas. And so I couldn't tell if Gwen was excited or upset because she was like very excited speaking, yeah, but Gwen, I think it was negative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was negative. And do we know why they picked Las Vegas? I have to assume that Robin's related to someone in Vegas. At this I point, have to right? assume that as well, that this was Robin's pick. Yeah. I just feel like if you're trying to escape religious persecution right would you not go to like a more liberal state right like a california yeah you know what i mean like i'm i'm just surprised by the choice especially since this state is the issue for them so right. yeah you're right because right. i'm thinking yeah. the city yeah that makes sense but yeah if it's the state's case then that doesn't they probably couldn't sense. afford to live in california let's True. face it vegas is gonna be much cheaper but I also i do think there had to be well because where's cousin mindy she's probably from vegas she, I bet you she lives in Vegas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we've already figured it out. Amanda would know if yeah. she was here. Yeah. All right. We'll have to ask her. <laughs> um, <laughs> Peyton's off, obviously really upset. Mm-hmm. Leon is pissed. All of them are. All and of, yeah, especially the older ones. Yeah. Mm. Maddie just chiming in with the, <sighs> what is Leon going to do? Leon's already weird. That Leon was the can't best fit in part. anywhere. What was, yeah. <laughs> Maddie says, uh, what's Leon going to do? Didn't you remember how weird they were when they went to school? And there is lore there that we will never get to know. No, no. This episode was hard for me because I feel like we see Leon struggling so much. Oh, yeah. To fit in, to just, I don't know. And they're just not comfortable. Like you can see mm-hmm. it. They're They're really struggling. And this is throwing their entire world upside down and they just want to have a little agency over their life like it it's bad yeah but of course i did feel bad when uh leon does present the list of reasons they (laughs) should stay in utah and the first one is the dance and i'm like no 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 that's where you lose as a parent that's where you would lose me you got to come in stronger than that like you got to keep my attention the dance is the worst one (laughs) but i get it as a kid right like that's the most important thing to you i think what leon is saying is like i'm heavily involved in my school right and i'm on some kind of committee where two or three people are depending on me Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna just be leaving them high and dry yeah it's really it's really i mean i talked about this on our podcast last week or this week whenever you hear it about you know, I, I was talking about how I'm coming on to talk with you about this. And we right. talked, Amanda and I talked a little bit about moving your kids in schools. If if you can have the luxury of waiting out the school year, yeah. great. Mm-hmm. If you don't, there's ways you could do this easier. Instead of being like three days, like why couldn't Leon 
stay with a relative, the Absolutely. same relatives who are stuck clean in this house, apparently. <laughs> and no, just yeah. Mm-hmm. Have Leon, Leon's like what, 16, 16 or 17 yeah. at this point? Mm-hmm. Let them stay with the relative, finish out the school year, and then come to Vegas. Yeah. What's wrong with that? It doesn't make any sense. Well, Mm-mm. well, it does because Cody, of course, says, where we go one, we go all. Is that the first time we hear this? I think so. That was I was like, wow, I didn't didn't know that this I mean, we episode just had watched that. we just watched all of season one and they he didn't say it there. So it's gotta be yeah. He picked it up in the second season, which becomes mm-hmm. he literally says to Aspen, This is your mantra. Where we go one, yeah. we go all. I can't yeah. take that man. I can't take him at all. He also goes on to say, I'm trying to be empathetic to Leon because I'm going through it too. Which Yeah. He can only understand things if he's going through that at the moment. Yes. He, these kids just, they have no agency over this decision. No. I mean, I moved my kids when we built our house. I had to switch schools for them and they were in second grade and they were going to be in third grade here. Now mm-hmm. I had the luxury of waiting till the school year ended. Sure. Not everybody does. I, yeah. I understand that. I called the school, even though they were in second to third grade, I called the school I had them do a tour of the school in the summer so that they saw the building. I signed them up for like a rec soccer league up here so that they had one friend Mm -hmm. that they would know. Like there are ways. And if you can't do those things, like if you're moving a long distance, you don't have that luxury. But like there are ways that you could at least talk to your kids. Yeah. Talk them through it. (laughs) <laughs> and and hear them and understand it. And Cody just railroads right over these kids. Like, we're doing it my way. And that's it. Yes. And, and what comply, is this? Comply, comply, comply. Yes. Oh, always comply with him. Oh, he says something about and like, and surprise, we're moving in three days. Like, he, he doesn't. Yeah, that's su- the worst part of this. Right? It To me, like, you would never say surprise. It would be, here's the really hard part. We can't talk mm-hmm. to anybody. And I know that's going to well, be hard. Surprise. Hashtag never forget. Surprise. I picked Wedding the dress. dress. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> that's exactly what it brought me back to. Like, he does not understand what the word surprise means. No. No. Because he be thinks good. everything that comes out of his mouth should be worshipped should and adored. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Worship. And yeah, he doesn't understand it. Oh, yeah. It's he's the worst. But I do love Maddie this entire episode because she eyes are rolling every time they yep. get to yep. her. She's like absolutely not having it. Yeah. So now we're going to uh, Robin's house. Of course, she's not mm-hmm. in the big house with the others. And we see that it's three days before the move. Find out that tomorrow's Dayton's birthday. And they're supposed to at this point move on Monday. Right. Yes. Yes. Apparently, and I forgot about this, Robin, Mary, and Cody go to Vegas to look at four houses to buy. Yeah, I forgot about that too. How are they going to do that? First of all, Robin has no, we know her credit's terrible here. Right. I think she still has the Victoria's Secret stat at this point, right? Tall jeans. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just wondering, what was the plan here? <laughs> like you're going to move into a furnished house for yeah. a month and then what? I mean, there's no plan. I guess Robin had family maybe that would help them. But even the idea of let's move to, we're going to find four houses to buy at the same mm-hmm. time. What? That It doesn't make any sense. And this is, this is what these kids are responding to. Absolutely. Like they're, they're responding to the, the chaos. They yeah. sense it. They don't feel like these adults have a handle on this. No. And, and they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> and for good reason. Um, when Leon talks to Mary at some point, Mary says, Leon was just 10 when we lived here. And then I'm putting the math together and thinking, okay, well, Leon's 16 now, which is what yeah. we assume. That's actually not that long. The way they're acting like we've right. been so established. I'm like, six years is, it's a long time, yeah. but not the way this family moves from yeah i place to place. i have a pretty clear dividing line in my childhood we we lived in a, a two-bedroom apartment when i was born mm-hmm. and we moved into our home in 1983 so i was six mm-hmm. i don't i can't tell you i don't have many memories in those first six years yeah so like i just don't i don't i don't know even my girls like they moved into this house when they were nine they have more memories now, but I think it takes decades to really feel established in a place. Yeah. And, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's like, 
you know, people move. I get it. We've, I think mm-hmm. we've been at our house now for five years. So who am I to talk? But, right. um, but don't you feel like you still have stuff to unpack? <laughs> well, yes. if I was Robin, I sure would. That's yes. Yes. She, she kills me with all that. So it's just weird that Robin was along for this, but also not weird mm-hmm. that Robin was along for it. Yeah. And of course, Robin's talking about how scared she is in front of her kids because she loves mm-hmm. to do that, which is no boundaries. It's yep. so terrible. Yep. Um, and Robin says she feels like they're jumping with a parachute. And I did love Dayton's response, which is like literally that would be showing. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> dude, that's your whole life is just your mom right. throwing like, you guys why out would windows. You, why would you not fake it that you have it all under control? That's exactly that's what you do as a parent. Like I did yeah. tell my daughter one time, I said, you think I know what's going on? I'm trying, but this is my first time being a parent. Like, I realize mm-hmm. now my mom mm-hmm. had no idea what was going on, but yeah. she pretended, which is why I thought, like, I feel like you're in control and you'll keep me safe and protected because yes. you didn't say, I'm so scared in front of me. <laughs> right. I'm terrified. We have no idea what's going to happen. The cops are going to come and get yeah. dad. He's going to go to jail for the rest of his life. <laughs> And then, you know, flash forward five years later and Cody's carrying her up the stairs because she has uncontrollable panic. Oh, my gosh. Like, she's just breeding anxiety into these kids. I mean, truly, like, there's – and especially if you know you have an anxious kid like Aurora, like, you would never do this. This is Mm -mm. the most backwards thing I've ever seen. Um, So Cody grabs a red suitcase and he's like, oh, this is all my stuff and Robin. Since we've gotten married, I can fit it in a suitcase. I do love that he's like – can I help you pack? He doesn't do any of that. He's just like, my stuff, red no. bag, let's yep. go. Yep. Very him. And these are things we really didn't see early on. We were like, wow, he's packing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't see it. So on the couch, we get a good Robin cry sesh where she says it's her fourth time moving in two years. And then she's crying, like gasp crying. I seriously thought I was here. I just finished unpacking house boxes just like a couple months ago. I thought I was here. Yeah. Okay, but do you really think that Robin, like, I feel like maybe she could have been in that house a year and she still had boxes just because she's Robin and she didn't unpack. I mean, we saw her argument. We just saw her. We just covered the wedding episode and we just saw her ironing on the floor. She doesn't even have a $10.88 ironing board from Walmart. So (sighs) she's just some of these choices. Um, Yeah. I do love that we see uh, oh, Cody has all of his purple shirts, which actually was hilarious because they yes. were every yeah. shade and one was striped, mm-hmm. but purple. Um, My gram would say he had a lilac shirt as well. Absolutely. Violet, mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. of them. They were every yep. shade, 50 shades of purple. Uh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> so we see Dayton on his bed. I don't know. I just love the keep out sign and then him just lying on the bed with the Nerf gun. And I was just. I feel for Dayton. I don't know what it is like. We did a whole thing on um, ASD on our podcast where we talked about autism spectrum disorder. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like Robin, she's kind of mean to Dayton. I would agree with you. I don't know what is going on there. Um, My son is on the spectrum. So I Mm -hmm. feel confident in a little of this where just everything she does with him doesn't, I shouldn't say everything, but a lot of what I see, I just think, oh my gosh, like you were making him so much more anxious. You're like putting him in these crowds and all this stuff, like yeah. all of the family, like especially for this, I think I would say like, you know what, we're going to do just our little pod of people to do this birthday. We have a lot going on and yes, we want to celebrate you, but like it's too much. It's way too much. That's too many things changing. Like, no, it's crazy. I feel like she, she sort of operates from a place of frustration with him oh yeah yeah and that like if i'm picking up on that he's picking up on that absolutely and that's super sad to me because it is obviously it's very difficult but her bringing i don't know i've always had a hard time with that not to say you couldn't bring a kid with autism into this situation but sure that is one you should really like this three-day thing isn't going to work robin could have stayed longer you know she could have done But she's Robin's gonna Robin. So let's see. I love seeing Janelle packing and Logan, Father Logan, talking about the books. He's packed mm-hmm. the books. Janelle says, Do I have the cookbooks? He says, Have you ever had that moment when you're leaving the house and you wonder, Did I lock the door? Or worse yet, you start spiraling and you imagine all the what ifs. 
I used to feel that way all the time, but it wasn't until a few years ago when I heard about a break-in just a few blocks away that I realized I needed to really step up my home security game. And now I can spiral about the what-ifs on things that don't matter, like reality stars, instead of the what-ifs of home security. We've had Simply Safe protecting our house for the last few years now, and it's a total game changer. With Simply Safe's fast protect monitoring, I know within five seconds if something's actually up and the live guards can actually speak to intruders to stop them. That's faster than a reality TV star can throw a drink. One of the things I really love the most is you're not locked into some over the top 90 day fiance level contract drama. Simply Safe is actually affordable as well, less than a dollar a day with no hidden fees, so it's easy to love. It's no wonder they've been named Best Home Security Systems by U.S. News & World Report for five years running. Whether you want to install it yourself, it really takes less than an hour, or have a professional handle it, Simply Safe is as easy as flipping channels between Chimp Crazy and the secret lives of Mormon wives. So why wait for the drama to happen? Get Simply Safe and know your home is covered just like I did. Protect your home with 50% off a new Simply Safe system plus a free indoor security camera when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. Just visit simplysafe.com slash criminality. That's simplysafe.com slash criminality. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes, like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this Deep Sales, and we've built the first Deep Sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash trial. That's linkedin.com slash trial for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash trial and get started. I've already packed the others. Like, I can't even imagine having a kid like Logan. Um, my life. Would I would love to have so a kid great. like Logan. Wouldn't it be great? How did I not get that? Didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't either. My daughter, I asked her to wipe like the windows in her house yesterday, which no, like the mirrors, not windows. The mirrors look like crap. And uh, all of a sudden I realized she was taking a nap. I'm like, is it really? That's like too much for you to do? I have my kids like on the payroll at this point. Uh They're 17. Yeah. And they, you know, they'll do anything for gas money. So I'm like, well, go in and scrub the bathroom floor Mm -hmm. and I'll give you $20. Like it's working. It's working. Do whatever you got to do. My son's got like a a debit card that like go Henry or whatever. And so he does tasks and he can see it. Best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, Kids do love money. Um, (laughs) Hunter's in the background saying that he wants to put his head through a cheese grater. And Mm -hmm. Janelle calmly says, today's not a good day for Hunter. I get it. Um, I know, Chris, poor Hunter. I did feel bad. I forgot how bad I felt for him during this move yeah, and how yeah, this is tough for him. Yeah, and Janelle sees it. I don't think Cody would ever really acknowledge it, but Janelle knew it was serious and it wasn't good, but I don't think she knew what to do. Janelle is opposed to this move. Oh, yeah. I mean, she wants to do it, but the 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 budget person inside Janelle. Sure. Like, we all know how much it costs to buy and sell houses to move yes i mean this is an expense that's why later she's just like let's just get in the cars and go yeah this doesn't have to be a whole big thing no pack what you need to sleep on and let's go like janelle is very she i always say i have janelle energy yeah she doesn't want to deal with a lot of things she's just like i don't care what book she put in that box let's just go yeah that's like the last thing on her mind she's literally planning for the future because no one else in this house will no Mm-mm. Oh, Cody's on the phone with Aurora one inch away from his face, of course. And he's saying that Mona, which I didn't realize Mona was already their realtor at this yep. point. Yeah. She finds, I guess it must have been a vacation home for them to rent for a month. Yeah. It looks like it's fully furnished. Right. So they just have to show up. I don't know how many bedrooms this house has to have. I don't. I, yeah. I don't remember, but all of them can sleep there. I'm like, well, all of them could sleep in my house, but they'd have to lay on top of each yeah. other. So I think there's a lot of floor sleeping. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Under and the and that, that's very disruptive for kids. Like when I 
when we moved to our house when I was a little kid, my parents were quote unquote remodeling it, even though they knew how to do nothing themselves. <laughs> sure. so they had to pay somebody. Yeah. And then they kept running out of money. Mm-hmm. So there were like months and months where like my parents would be sleeping on the couch because mm-hmm. their bedroom was getting sheet rocked or right. we had sheets as walls. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we were living in a constant state of construction. Right. It was really hard. It's really hard on kids when they're living space is disrupted. Oh, absolutely. And then you think of uh, of Dayton and obviously Gwen now, we find out later, you know, she's on the spectrum. Like that's a yep. lot and having people in your space yes. and I, yeah, this is a mess, but you know. Those kids were probably like 10 sleeping bags on a floor oh, in yeah. a room for a month, yeah. which is a lot. A I month. mean, you have teenage girls, teenage boys, they need privacy. Yeah. And we're at a new school. Everything is different. Everyone's mm-hmm. taking this different. Mm-hmm. Your mom's one of your moms is clearly going around talking about how panicked she is all the time. So (laughs) one of the moms is falling apart. Yeah. (laughs) Feels like an everyday thing. Um, So they realized though, that this, this house that they're going to rent isn't ready until Tuesday. So originally the plan is to move to Monday, but Mm -hmm. now Cody's like, I guess maybe Tuesday. Actually, Cody doesn't really say that yet. We find out somebody else may have come up with that one. Yeah. Somebody else suggested that. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about the sheriff riding up and down the road. They keep saying they see it. But I also know teenagers at that age are dramatic as heck. Like, Oh, yeah. Right? Wouldn't oh, your yeah. daughters, like, would you mm-hmm. really be surprised if your daughters were like, they drove by eight times today and it was like No, one. I would not be surprised. Right? It, yeah. Like, you would just yeah. be like, okay. You know, if I didn't see it with my own two eyes, I have a 15-year-old. I don't know that it happened. So let me ask you this, because you're the the criminal expert. Sure, absolutely. What, what, who, like, who in this situation would they have arrested? Would it just be Cody or would it be the mothers? I think that's the fear is Cody would get arrested. Nobody else right? would get they arrested. They don't talk about, like, Mary being arrested. No. Well, she well Mary's legal his legal wife. wife. Mm-hmm. Right. For a little while. But is longer. Cody the one committing the crime? Cody's the one committing the crime, but also... It, and you're exactly right because everyone's freaking out, but really, like, that's the only one that goes away. Right. So, so why doesn't Cody say, I'm going to go ahead to Vegas? Right. Maybe I'll take Logan and Hunter or something, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead to Vegas. I'm going to straighten stuff out there. Mm-hmm. And then when the school year ends, you guys, you know, you can come and visit and go back and forth right. for a couple months. But when the school year ends, everybody comes down. I already have an established situation down here. We're done. Where were you during this? Where were you during this? Because that actually makes so much sense. You know what he would have done? He probably would have taken Robin. Absolutely. He'd have to. She needs help. She needs help. She makes me mad a little while long. I mean, she makes me mad all the time, but a little while longer Mm -hmm. she does that. Um, So, uh, oh, Cody tells the camera, I haven't talked to all the wives yet, but Janelle's good with it, I think. Christine's good, obviously. Robin's good with it. And then turns around, Robin, have I even asked you? And that's where she gets to play her favorite game, Evasive Wife. Yep. She's like, yeah, like, shut I up. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. This is the first I'm hearing of it. Okay. Everything. She's never heard mm-hmm. anything more than once. She has Mm-mm. some kind of temporary amnesia. So Cody says she's worried about sharing a kitchen with the other women. I'm like, what does that have to do? Whatever. Well, sharing the kitchen is a real bone of contention it here amongst is. the wives. Like they bring it up all the time. It's been in the book. It's it's everywhere. Whereas for me, sharing the kitchen would be much better than like sharing a bathroom. Oof, no. Yeah, you I agree I mean? with you. Mm-hmm. Mm. I just think yeah. Mary made anything difficult. So I guess if you had to spend more time in the kitchen, it would be terrible True. cody sees dayton dayton says it's his birthday he has his money cody says for 20 dollars, we give me a hug he does i actually thought that was kind of sweet that dayton's getting his mm-hmm. money um mm-hmm. good for D- dayton robin sees him and he's like maybe i can buy a new game with my money and what does she say and what does she say maybe a dresser yeah maybe a dresser that's a wild thing to say. I, I don't give this kid something. Yeah, at this point, give... let him buy a game. Let him buy the gold cartridge of the Legend of Zelda, like I bought in right. 1989 with all my birthday money. <laughs> exactly. It's such a weird. I don't know. It, it, that bothered me so much because she was kind of like, "Be responsible with it," or like she was kind of surprised almost that he yeah. would say it. I'm like, "No, let let him have this thing." Like. You're the parent. You get the dresser. Yeah. How about you're my mom? You could. There's certain things that I make my kids pay for. Sure. Okay. 
there's certain things I feel like as a parent, mm -hmm. I have to pay for. Right. Like school clothes, mm -hmm. shoes, food, dressers. Right. right. Like, I wouldn't dressers want my kid to buy their own bedroom furniture. No. But if it's I weird. buy it and you don't like it, then you can buy mm -hmm. what you like. You know, that's right. where... And if money's tight, go to Ikea or go to the Salvation Army and get a used one. There's plenty of nice used dressers in used furniture stores. Not for Robin. Not for Robin. Mm -hmm. But that, oh, that just got under my skin again. It's gross. Yeah. So Cody's back at the big house talking to Mary and Christine. More coughing, of course. Just, mm -hmm. it's like an echo at this point. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're all talking about how much they should pack. Apparently, nobody's talked before this moment. This is what also drives me crazy. This is the Brown family. Everyone's got a different idea of what they're mm -hmm. packing and bringing. So apparently, Cody tells Christine to pack the beds and kitchen stuff. Did mm -hmm. you see that trailer you had? <laughs> yes. I could just stretch my arms out like e mm -hmm. an eagle, and that's as much room as they have. And they have 18 kids plus. And what are they going to do with these beds when they get to the furnished it's it's dumb they needed to here's what they needed to do i want to hear they it. needed to pack all their necessities that they need for like say they were going on a trip for a week right and then they needed to get another u-haul and put all their stuff that they need to live drive down there rent a storage unit right. put all that stuff in the storage unit yeah and then find house well again cody should have done this himself weeks earlier honestly that makes so much sense for him to have gone ahead like they did that on People like do, the oregon parents trail do that all the time <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> it's true you would send that person ahead and he's the mm -hmm. one that would be in trouble so of course it makes sense janelle yes. we know has lived on her own for a while she could have handled yep. this entire thing yeah it's janelle has Janelle has Logan. I mean, he's more of a partner than Cody ever has. <laughs> Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so Mary's like hearing what Christine's saying she's packing and she's like, I'm basically taking nothing, which makes sense. Yep. And uh, Cody says, I'm going to talk to Janelle about getting a bigger trailer. I love that so mm -hmm. much. Because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I love that it's like a permission thing from Janelle. Like, Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I often wonder, like, they talk about Janelle like she is – uh Susie orman right absolutely yeah but like how good at finances is janelle well is we... she just the only one who knows how to do an excel formula absolutely and if you need proof we do have the uh you know her buying the eight not 18 wheeler what am i saying fifth wheel <sighs> fifth wheel yeah mm -hmm. that wasn't like probably the best um that told me maybe she doesn't know as much as we think but unfortunately she knows the most i have a theory about Ooh. that let me hear. I think she needed to act quickly because mm -hmm. she saw the writing on the wall. Right. And needed to buy something that was worth something. Got it. That she could have and sell. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Because it, yeah, it didn't seem very much. Because she was in a lease her. in her apartment. So we knew she couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I just feel like she had a reason for that. Absolutely. That, I mean, I think that, that makes a lot the of obvious. sense. Um, and so Janelle basically tells him, no, if we're trying to get out of here and don't want people to see us, putting an RV in front of our yard would be, mm -hmm. you know, a huge, which agree. Yes, obviously. Agree. Yeah. And so Janelle says, uh, he, he mentions moving on Tuesday and, um, she says basically if he wants to do that, I'm ready to just say, well, I'll meet you there. Taking your advice, which makes mm -hmm. so much more sense. You could, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like Cody not being there for a couple months. Are the kids going to notice? Yeah, I know. This show could have ended after three seasons. <laughs> Suddenly everybody's like, wait a minute. We I... don't need him. <laughs> yeah. So Janelle actually cries, which is this the second time she's cried on the show? She never cries. This was wild. This and she cried over Christine moving. I don't remember yep. any other times. I don't either. Yeah, so that actually broke my heart for her. And then Cody is back at Christine's and he's talking to her and saying, you know, everything's going great until I talk to your sister wife. To which Yeah, this, this was nasty. I know. And to which Christine says, you mean your wife, which is true. Like he he wants to pit them together. Things mm -hmm. we didn't see mm -hmm. the first time. Um yep. and of course coughing. Just so much coughing. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so Cody also says something about if you feel like if something's going to go bad, you're going to feel it in your gut, 
which can he feel things in his gut anymore or no that's his glute his was it his gluteus maximus Glute- or his pet yes gluteus yeah. maximus yeah, yeah. <laughs> covid took that from him <laughs> There's so much whey protein in his gut. He he can't feel anything. Can you imagine? Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. And so Mary tells, you know, Mary in this conversation with Christine in the kitchen says, we should just leave tomorrow being Monday. And then Cody says, Robin doesn't, doesn't think we should do that. Um, and then he says, until I, unless I get a vibe that we need to leave before Tuesday morning, we're not. And then I did love Spicy Mary in this. Also, I know. I got to say, if you're watching Couple to, um, Couple to Threpple, Amy Ugh, and Amanda fantastic. are recapping it. And it's so much better hearing your takes on spicy ramen. Spicy and, ramen. And, mm-hmm, I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt like I was stealing spicy when I said it. Um, so Mary says to him, you know, why? Because you and Robin decided it when you were over there. Didn't mm-hmm. pick this up the first mm-hmm. time. They're seeing yep. that Robin's the one that speaks Cody. I hate that. We That's... see a little. I do too. We see a little bit of this in season one. Mary almost immediately regrets her decision to bring Robin yeah. into this family. Mm-hmm. I think so. And I think she clings to Robin because Robin's the only one who likes her in the later season. Yeah. No, totally. She's the only mm-hmm. one. But And I think part of the reason the others don't is they're like, look what you brought in. <laughs> Look what you brought. You did this to Mm -hmm. us. Yep. Yep. (laughs) So Cody's like, no, no, no. Mary says, sorry, I'm just asking. They are very quick to back down from him in these earlier seasons. Um, There's a small meeting with the wives, more coughing. He says they're leaving Tuesday and Janelle's worried because the police have been by a few times. Have they? We don't really know. Well, and and I wish I had my shame bell, but Cody does have a point here. Because he does say there's so much chaos that somebody just needs to make a decision. Totally. But that's like... You know what I mean? So like he is right about that. Like somebody needs to make a decision. But they make the wrong one, of course, always. All the time. So Cody says, Tuesday morning, 7 a.m., we're leaving. He makes horn noises with his mouth for some reason. We don't... We have no idea why. I know. Bodies in seat at 6.30 a.m.? That's hilarious. Why would you plan to leave at 7 Imagine putting your kids, putting small kids in a car at 630 and be like, sit there. We haven't even gotten on the road yet. We see how this goes with Robin. Like in the wedding episode, her kids are in the van for five seconds before she gets in. They're locking her out. They're punching each other. They're jumping out windows. Like, no, no. 30 minutes was just the most wild thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Telling me once again, this man has no concept of time. He has no clue. Mm-mm. Yeah. So now we're at Dayton's birthday party. Everyone's eating chocolate cake. Mm-hmm. Cody's talking. Cake looks good. Cake, cake looks good. good. Yeah, I mm-hmm. like I like a big balloon piece. If I'm gonna eat that cake, mm-hmm. one of the balloons. Okay. I like the yeah. frosting. Give me the frosting. Yep. Um, Cody's talking about leaving this magical house. How it's so sad. He's crying. He says, mm-hmm. of course, there will be tears. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I love. I want. What year did the movie There Will Blood become out? Because I there feel like blood. That's, um. Mm, oh, I I, I heard you're a movie buff like you know these things right well no no Not no i have ones. a i have knowledge of every movie for a specific set okay. of years okay because my mother worked at a movie theater and i went constantly for free got it but anything outside of like 2000 to 2005 i, I don't know okay okay so, yeah mm-hmm. well we're just going to assume it was the same year because cody doesn't have an original thought no. um and you know he thought it was profound to say that yeah um, mm-hmm. So this is where Christine tells us TMZ basically tries to tell us what TMZ <laughs> is. The press, the press are the clamoring press. for an interview outside. Yeah, mm-hmm. when I think the press, the first thing that comes to my mind is the thirty mile zone. Um, it's probably like one email from some dude from Scar- Starcasm. Like, can I get absolutely. a quote for this article I'm writing? <laughs> absolutely. Who do you think the leak was, though? Because somebody had to have leaked it, right? Somebody, le- maybe a neighbor who hates them oh, so true. much. They do get mm-hmm. a lot of neighbor hate, so that would make sense. <laughs> or if no, the family wouldn't have because they would have known all this would have fallen on them to right. clean this house. Right. Um, they have to clean this house. I can't even. Ugh. I would be. I would be livid um, if mm-hmm. I got stuck with this. Um, so the kids are packing their stuff, and they decide they're going to leave. Originally, we're going to leave tomorrow morning. Now they're leaving today, right? They're leaving later. Yeah, that like day. right now. Yeah. Right now. Mm-hmm. Of course, even the most small amounts of stuff, they still haven't figured out how to get that together. Like, how, how are you now? 
I just don't get it. We've seen them moving for like three weeks, it feels like. I guess it's been three days. I love but... when Logan's in the truck and he's oh. screaming. <laughs> Is it Peyton? Peyton. He's screaming at Peyton. <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking your stupid toys. He's and like, he's throwing the boxes out. We are bring par- bringing Peyton's worthless toys. I'm like, wow, that hurts me. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a Payton fan, but I was like, ouch. Logan is fed up. He, he has had enough. He has. He's in the back of that truck just throwing stuff around. One more Payton like, box. I'm so tired of being the only adult in this world. <laughs> he really is. And so, of course, they leave a ton of stuff there. Amy, mm-hmm. did they even bring like three boxes in total at this point? This is so wild how much stuff they leave. Like, what are the relatives supposed to do with all of this? I mean, first of all, you've already got to sell a polygamist house. Like, that is going to be difficult to be like, there are three kitchens and one of you will be a basement wife. Right. But to be like, we didn't bother to clean up the trash. Um, Also, Mm -mm. can you feed our pets? Um, It's very them. So anyway, these wonderful relatives, I guess, are going to come and clean Cody walks out of the house by saying, we're getting out of Dodge City. Have you ever heard it said that way? Mm. No. Nope. (laughs) No, we're getting out of Dodge. Right. (laughs) I don't know. His mind fascinates Uh, me in like the worst way. I I I know. I could just watch him in like a a glass enclosure for like (laughs) six weeks straight. (laughs) (laughs) That's absolutely where he should be. So they have to go to Robin's house because Robin's is a rental and family isn't going to clean that. And Robin's showing these dried flowers from her wedding. She's crying and says one of Do we re- my favorite oh, Sorry, No, go ahead. Do we really think Robin and Cody cleaned the house top to bottom to return it to the landlord? Absolutely not. When we when they cut away, we see she's still got the flowers hanging on the freaking yeah. <laughs> window. So I'm like, what did you do here, Robin? Nothing. But she does say, you know, just with her hat on, which I'm mad I'm wearing a hat today because I feel like I'm channeling her. She said, Mm -hmm. this is not the America I learned about when I was in school. (sighs) What America did she learn about? I I have no idea, but I will say this, and and this is not political. Like, everybody (laughs) should have the right to marry and do whatever, whomever they please and do whatever they want. And, you know, it's, I, I, all I will say is I hope that Robin and Cody remember that feeling and Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. Um, Because everybody should have the right to. If Cody wants to have four wives, he should be able to have four wives. I know. As long as they are treated equally and everyone is consenting and they're they're you know, doing their own thing. And uh, they should all have equal amounts of money. Protection under the law. Yeah, Yeah. and equal protection. (laughs) Yeah, yours is more important. But also Mm -hmm. equal money because Janelle definitely gets screwed in this whole situation. Well, anyone who's not his legal wife does. That's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So now they're trying to get stuff in the trailer, but you won't believe this, Amy. Cody trailer, Cody trailer, he has the key and he is not there. Of course he does. He's at Robin's. Of course he is. I'm sure, right? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. He's probably zipping around in that Lexus somewhere. Who knows where? (laughs) Who knows? Arby's? Who knows what he's doing? (laughs) <laughs> and they're all sitting there like with their heads up their butt. It's yeah. Like, what are we going to do here? We can't get into the trailer. Daddy Logan, come here. Can you get us into the trailer? Like he has to pick the lock. He has to, you know. It's so wild. Like to hear, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like the one job you have is to open this trailer before you leave for Robbins. Can't do yeah. it. So I do love hearing Janelle saying it's brain damage to try and move this group. <laughs> truer words have never been spoken yeah. like it's, it's even harder to watch you know and she's like there's space put stuff in the dang car like let's go mm-hmm. um, let's just go yeah and so they're getting stuff in the trailer they hear an ambulance go by but of course everyone pretends it's a police officer a siren coming to get them all now mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. not well you know janelle's frustration is born of if every wife had to just move their their little clan, right? Janelle's would be done. She'd Absolutely. be in Vegas already. Yeah, yeah. They would have their stuff together. But she's trying to corral Christine's kids, Robin's kids, and that's where the brain damage comes in. Absolutely. She's having to rent out her best kid, Logan, to everyone. <laughs> I feel like Hunter's probably trying to sabotage things. He might be behind these <laughs> upcoming tires, to be honest. <laughs> So Cody says uh, that they need to pray. So they all go inside and they pray. And Christine's like, 
what's the plan? Because we don't have anywhere to go for, you know, Mm -hmm. a day. And well, God will provide them a rental. You well, know that's how it works. You're quoting Robin again here, I see. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, that's Robin's favorite thing to say. Um, yep. So Cody says, though, quote, we are going to drive until we can't stand it anymore, until our navels are scratching our backbones. That was something. That right? That was something. Yeah. He yep. took us on a visual journey. I will say that. <laughs> Kudos. He really did. <laughs> I don't even understand what that has to do with driving, though. Like, when does I, that happen? I really got stuck on that because as a writer, I appreciate a good, like, metaphor. Sure. But I was like, what does this mean? Does it mean you're slouched so much that I, right. I, I can't I can't unpack it? I can't. No, no. That's... I just have to throw up my hands. Yeah. <laughs> I can interpret Shakespeare. I can't do this. <laughs> this is, no. Oh, man, that I can't imagine interpreting Cody when Brown like as like a class or something. Oh, I know. I yeah, know. that'd be fun. I could teach that. Yeah, class. I know. Do it. Do yeah. it. Give me that class. I'll teach it. Absolutely. So after the prayer, we get this sunbeam song, which we've I don't ever remember getting a song. Do OK, you? I want to talk about this, please, because it's like I'll be your sunbeam. I'll right. be your sunbeam. OK, so there is. And the only way I know it is from Nirvana. Mm-hmm. Um, on their unplugged album, they have that song, Jesus don't Jesus, Jesus don't Jesus don't want me for a sunbeam. Okay. And I think it's oh. in retaliation to this. So yes. I think this is a hymn. Right. It is. And that song, which was not written by Nirvana, I forget who they covered, but um, it's in retaliation, I believe, to this. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I think. And it... I had never known that. And when I heard it, I was like, oh my God, is this what Kurt Cobain was telling us about? That we, that makes sense. It is mm-hmm. an, an old Christian hymn back in 1900. So we all learned something today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, this song, we never get songs. And this song mm-hmm. ends up being played basically throughout the whole thing. Yeah, like 10 times. Well, probably because it's copyright free. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So now we see clips of the family driving off. And of course, clips at the house in complete disarray, you know, evidence for their poor family. They're back to, you know what I do miss? The family couch conversations. Yes. Right? Yeah. The reaction shots. Mm -mm. Yep. We don't get them at all. Yeah. I wish for reunions they had to do that. I feel like they should have to show up and do that. But together. Also, I don't want Robin speaking for Cody. So then there's, you know, Mm kind of goes Mm -hmm. both ways. So Robin's on the couch and saying, I I just thought we were naive. And Christine says, hopeful, which is what Christine was <laughs> at yeah. this point. Um, and one thing they mentioned that I do think makes sense is that people have changed with, you know, their views of polygamy and kind of saying if they want to do it, do it. But the sure. laws haven't mm-hmm. changed. And that made a lot of sense. Now we're on the road, Amy. We are on oh the boy. road. Oh and boy. we make it to Vegas in record time. Just kidding. <laughs> We're going to break down several times. I didn't realize this was the the tire blowout episode. This is the tire blowout episode, which nothing draws the attention of the police more than like 17 vehicles on the side <laughs> like of the road. Like a caravan. With, with 13 kids running around. In the road, apparently, we find out later. Yes. yes. Like if you're Cody and you're, who gets the flat tire first? Christine? Robin. And Robin. the Alexis. Everybody else, just keep going. Keep we'll going. Meet you. We'll mm-hmm. catch up with you. Like, let's not make this super obvious. No, we're gonna we're but gonna make it really obvious. So, mm-hmm. eleven or twelve miles in this trip, where they have to get out of Utah, Robin's driving the car, has a tire issue, and the tire is shredded. So and they're not gonna find a replacement no, tire. And even I at have night, a Lexus very similar. It's a uh-huh. low profile tire. They're not gonna find it. Well. That's not true. Cody finds something. <laughs> he find, he puts the wrong size tire and, on the car, on the back. And then two of the wrong size, of course, because yeah. you got to, if you're going to make it bad, make it real, real bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, it's nighttime. It's Martin Luther King Day, they tell us. And so, of course, you can't find tires, you idiot, at this point mm-hmm. at night. So, of course, uh, Robin's saying, I have kids in my car with me, like, to try to get sympathy. Who did yeah. she pull out? I saw one kid come out of that car, Aurora. Oh, I didn't notice. Was Aurora she was the only kid with her? How many kids can you fit in the Lexus? I can't imagine she had a bunch. I can't imagine. I mean, maybe she would let Dayton sit up front. Is he big enough to sit up front? Maybe. But would she I, let I don't him know. sit up front? I don't know. I can't imagine Robin doing anything independent. So like, <laughs> exactly. this is real weird for me. Exactly. So anyway, she's, you know 
commiserating with having kids with her. Um, and of course, as you said, the department store hat doesn't have the right size. Cody buys it anyway. Now they're back on the road with. Did you notice, though, when he was changing the tire, uh -huh. they were saying that he was like cursing and stuff. And I thought about the scene in A Christmas Story. When oh the yeah says, oh, fuck. yeah <laughs> when he's changing the the lug nuts that's exactly <laughs> what it is <laughs> i like that yeah he, yeah we don't see that but we do hear logan say dad do you want me to do this and you can talk and he goes i don't want to talk and i was like yeah. "Ooh, spicy yeah. Yeah. so two hours later they have to, you know have these tires replaced everyone's on the side of the road again and then they start driving off within one mile christine gets a flat tire <laughs> Yep. And we already know they got the last two tires in this, in Dodge yeah. City. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what are they going to do? So this was kind of confusing to me, but they said Christine Spare is one of the temporary ones. So I guess the ones you can like yeah. basically drive to the next exit. It's like a little better the donut than the donut ones. Oh, yeah. a little better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Janelle has a real spare. So yeah. <laughs> immediately Cody's like, obviously we take Janelle's because we're not going to mm -hmm. have any more breakdowns. Mm -hmm. Which you can't do that. It's so stupid. And you can't go over like 35 miles an hour on a donut know, or a spare, the so I don't know what they're doing. So immediately it doesn't work. So Cody has to go back to the spare, lug nut breaks, tries the next one, more mm -hmm. lug nuts break, mm -hmm. and then the last ones, lug nuts, broken. At this point, you call AAA and you call it a night. Honestly, after the, as soon as she got pulled over or she pulled over, it should have been done before yeah, even done. this. Like, it's so late. What is, you can't even yeah. be in the house. So great. You no. get there, you sit outside. I don't understand. Mm -mm. So Cody says, I was trying to decide if it was a sign I wasn't supposed to go. The way I would you be think? livid about hearing this at this point I in know. the story. I know. Mm -mm. I know. So in four hours, they've made it 20 miles. <laughs> How are those kids handling it? Like, truly, Ugh. I'm thinking, truly for one, but all of the kids, like, that's, it's too much. Right, because Christine is driving. Of course she is. So how is she tending to truly and driving? I didn't even think about that. Um, <sighs> this is a mess. I feel like this is nursing on the go. <laughs> like she's this is just, a mess. It really is. She's just got, like, truly stuffed under one boob and Absolutely. she's just driving driving down the highway whatever whatever mm -hmm. and singing very calmly i'm sure and so i love this that cody says basically we're not giving up you know we've come this far Let's we are pioneers going. we have made it up the hill now we just have to make it down the other side like shut up dude you're still not up the hill oh god <laughs> so he says uh what's crazy is the answer was so simple is he trying to make us think he thought of this? Because there's no way no, he, he thought of this. He did not think of this. My impression, and maybe I missed it, was that this came from Christine and Janelle. Absolutely. It had to. Yeah. But they had to yeah. get Robin on board to tell him because he would have never done it. And so they cut to Janelle saying, we reserved a room right down the freeway. And so they'll stay the night and then pick were you things like, up in the morning. Were you like, a room? I know. We reserved <laughs> a room. I do think that's what she said, that it was just a room. They did not come out of there looking rested. It needs to be, I reserved seven rooms at the nearby hotel. Honestly, something. None mm. of them looked happy to be getting on the road. But like, it didn't make any sense. You know you can't get tires. Why would you keep pushing this? And the like, kids were melting down. Absolutely. They're going to, they're, they're ready to go. They're going to make it to Vegas. They can move into the house today. This is going to work out great. Mm-hmm. So now they have new tread on a few tires and they're off. 200 miles has taken four hours and they're almost to Cedar City when suddenly mm -hmm. Cody feels the tra trailer wobble. Oh, that's scary. It, it The whole thing is. And yeah. guess what? Another flat tire. <laughs> what are they doing? I know. That happened to me on the highway once. I was just coming down 81 and I looked in my rearview mirror and there was this truck behind me and his trailer was like loose Ooh. and it was like fishtailing Ooh. and he was able to like keep control of his car. I don't know how and like yeah. get to the side of the road. But like trailers kind of terrify me for that. My husband is a car guy and yeah, he's yeah. always like towing trailers and stuff. And I'm always a nervous wreck. No, I don't blame you. We yeah. saw... um on Thanksgiving one year, and I'll never forget it, we were going to from Tallahassee to Pensacola. It's about three hours. And we were behind an RV. And mm. they lost control. Like, their tire went flat, and it flipped, and just the whole thing <gasps> fell apart. It was 
Oh my god. Uh, yeah, like the most unsettling thing ever. So yes. Yes. Not a big fan. Um, so anyway, they're back, they're talking, they're all sitting around talking, not sitting around, nobody's sitting, but Christine's literally saying, you know, having a meltdown and saying, I have all the kids, which is why I also don't think Robin has really anyone. And as saying, you know, we have to feed them. We have to do something like at this point, you have to feed these kids. Like you have to, like you, one of the things about being a parent is you have to know when to say okay, it's enough. Absolutely. <laughs> like we're done. Yeah. Let's just get these, let them, let them sit for two hours. Let them have a meal. Let Absolutely. them run around. Mm-hmm. Let them, like, just let them re Yeah. Charge. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cause you're the one dealing with it. And you yeah. also know, like you have a lot of snacks. Like anytime I need to shut mm-hmm. somebody up in my car, I throw food at them. It works for me. Yep. Um, yep. iPad and some food. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But Cody's all like F them kids. We're getting to Vegas. Yep. He also gets pulled over by a, state trooper who says you know just wanted to make sure you guys were okay because kids are playing in the road yeah he's like can you keep the kids on the shoulder he's like he was so nice i'm like no i think he was terrified this kind of stuff makes me a nervous wreck so they're back on the road i'm sure the kids are still melting down with christine he does not seem to care about that no he doesn't care but if he was in the car it would it Mm -hmm. would it would be a totally Throw them story. some chicken nuggets. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and like, why do you all have to drive one behind each other? Like, I just know, go this off is the exit. so weird. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. I don't get it. So Mary then talks about seeing the lights of Vegas. And Cody says, did it make you happy when you saw them? She said, yeah, very calm. She was just driving the one of the U-Haul or something, right? I think she must have yeah. had Leon with her. But yeah. So no wonder you were calm. Yeah. Cody then says, Vegas is a great place for religious freedom. Vegas is my Plymouth Rock. And and I'm kind of like, what? I know. (laughs) Vegas? Yeah, I know. Her? (laughs) I mean, Vegas is a lot of fun. Sure. But I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, it doesn't scream out to me as a beacon of religious freedom. It just doesn't. No, no. It screams out to me, Colty, Debbie. Yeah. um, Yeah. And some of the others. (laughs) Yeah. Colty and Debbie. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So driving around town with no air conditioning in that. I'll car. never forget that. Like how <laughs> upset I was for her. And after that, almost everything she did, I was like, "He didn't give you AC. <laughs> like, he didn't give you air conditioning. Forget I, it. I get it." Mm-hmm. So anyway, we pull up to the rental. More coughing. We're just gonna keep this going. And then yep. all of the parents had to sign a contract, which I thought was kind of weird. Like the realtor, the rental agreement. Was that weird? I I feel like so my husband and I bought a house in 2007 under some real sketchy circumstances Uh (laughs) um it was it was those subprime mortgages oh yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and like I had terrible credit but Mm -hmm. I had a decent income he had good credit but didn't have a great income so they're like cobbling things Mm -hmm. together and I feel like that's what's happening here oh somebody has a decent credit score the other person has some income the other person has like a rental history And they're oh, piecing yeah. all that together to make one decent person to sign the paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect way to describe it. Because, yeah. of course, Robin's someone I was wondering, why is she here? But you're mm-hmm. right. She probably does have the rental history. She might have a rental history and some references. And True. Janelle might have the money. Mm-hmm. And Mary's the wife. So mm-hmm. she and Cody have to sign. And Cody has the credit score. And at this point, yeah, Christine hasn't had to pay for Truly's kidneys yet. So... Right. Her credit right. isn't damaged just yet. Back to playing Sunbeam again. We're still doing that. Yeah. I don't know what that is. And kind of the end of this episode is the producer. Ooh, the meat puppets. The meat puppets are the, the people who did. Oh, okay. Jesus okay. don't want me for Sunbeam. <laughs> okay. I'm Sorry. thinking like, were there meat puppets in this No, no, no. I'm, I'm putting that in there because it just came to me. Oh, and, yeah. And we'll you know, get comments yeah. if not. So yes. good idea. It was the meat puppets. Okay. okay. Perfect. Mm-hmm. And so the mm-hmm. producer asks Maddie what's wrong. And she looks at, at him and says, really? I hate it here. I want to go home, which I get. She She's kind of like, what's right? I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> you've been documenting my life for years. <laughs> what do I'm you in mean? a literal nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? <laughs> which makes sense because then we, you know, show truly on a pool table just Throwing balls yeah. around, probably with a and blowout I, She diaper. did not feel like she was secured. I was a little nervous that she was going to fall backwards. 
I'm telling you, the fact that these kids weren't in the hospital every other day always <laughs> amazes me. I know. And what I really loved is seeing Father Logan crashed on the bed. Like, he's... Yeah, he's tired. He's he been through tired it. tired <laughs> from raising these fools. He's like, I have 17 kids. I can't deal with this anymore. I need a break. I need a nap. Exactly. And we see Maddie crying, and that's really how the episode ends. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. It's real bad. It's it's darker than I remember it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, I just feel so bad for these older kids. Mm-hmm. The younger kids, I mean, they're just going to do whatever. They're right. going to be upset, but they're going to go along with yeah. it. The older kids, like, they they are human beings. Yeah. Like, they are people now. Like, so how old is your oldest? 15? 15. 15. Mm-hmm. So about two or three years ago, you probably realized, wow, this kid is a person. Absolutely. Like they become a person right. at some point. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I could never imagine just railroading my kids like that. No. And my husband and I have talked several times about like the possibility of moving to North Carolina. Mm-hmm. We both love North Carolina. But at this point, sure. I'm like, I wouldn't do it because she's established in school. She has her friends. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to make that sacrifice. Of course, there's times where you have to, but I'm not going sure. to willingly make that sacrifice. Right. For something I would love to, you know, that could really be detrimental to her if you don't do it right. My right. Gosh. And and even if you had to do it for a job or something, I mean, military kids have to move all the time, all the time. right? Yeah. But I'm sure like their parents talk to them and, you know, they yeah. understand this is the life we have. And, you know, there's other kids in, in their schools and in their communities that do the same thing. Exactly. So you have support there. It's like these kids just had zero support. And yeah. he did not do this in a way he should have given those older kids an option to stay with family and finish out the school year. If these people are going to clean your house, they would watch your kids. Like Leon could have stayed with Grandma Bonnie. Oh, Grandma Bonnie would have loved that. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't. They probably would have had a better life. <laughs> Honestly. Um, <laughs> it, it doesn't make a lick of sense. None of their choices Mm-mm. did. But I will say at the time, I like felt sorry for them. Um, I know years ago I, know. I didn't see you didn't see all the signs so no I don't no know. I mean I was only like 30 years old right when did it come years out years ago 2010 2010 yeah I was 26 I was a baby I we were babies <laughs> hold on I'm 47 it's 2024 I can't do math I don't know I was in my early 30s yeah yeah 33 maybe something yeah. like that and I was an idiot. I was just sitting there like, this guy's a good dude. I'm like, he wants to love these women. He can love these women. <laughs> like, he loves his kids. But what we didn't realize, none of them were quite old enough. Maddie was starting to, you know, talk back or whatever. But yeah, he hadn't had to, like, have a real relationship with them. No. He's just fun dad. No. Yeah. He hasn't seen yet that they are people. You're exactly and right. And when they become people, it changes things. Like, yeah. I remember even feeling funny about... And Amanda and I talk about a lot about this, like putting your kids on Instagram and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like once my girls hit like 14, like I felt weird about doing it. Yeah, and yeah. I started to ask their permission all the time. Oh, yeah. And they yeah, never yeah. gave it. They still don't. Of course not. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> no, I totally get. Yeah, there's like, I absolutely understand that. Because now it's like, even mentioning on the show, I've never mentioned my kids' names just for whatever reason. Right. I just haven't. I wanted right. them to always have that um, if anybody ever listened. But um but now, like, I, I keep it very, very vague about them because, mm-hmm. especially my daughter, because she's like her own person and it's not yeah. fair. And to did do anyone that. ever say to these kids, do you want to be on TV? Uh, Is it okay if we put you on TV? Because a lot of them have opted out of the show now as their adults. Absolutely. And then is it a Duggar situation? Is Cody paying them? Is he giving them money? He should be. I know. Oh, yeah. That Duggar thing with mm. what's, your, what's her face is unreal that yeah and jill is that it jill? that's i always get them confused yeah, by thinking think so. right that jill bob duggar i don't know yeah <laughs> no the only one that really got out i think um yeah it, the fact that tlc would pay why their talent why why isn't there like a fund for them there should have been yeah you know something put in yeah. place but i don't know i think we'll see that in the future uh all these kid youtubers so. and stuff coming up and Stealing the crap out of their parents. Oh, Gen Z is not going to put up with this. No. Gen Z is going to demand payment. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there I'm will be two of them. I know. Money. Yeah, I'm sure. 
So Amy, thank you so much for coming on and doing that with me. And uh, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun to chat about this episode. I mean, it's enraging in so many ways. And absolutely, you know, I'm being, I'm being, you know, I'm being soft here. Oh, you are. Internally, I am raging. Absolutely. And if you want to hear unfiltered Amy, (laughs) really going for Cody (laughs) more than we allowed her to do here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> then you have to check out Little Miss Recap. Is there an actual – do you guys have scheduled days that you're putting stuff out? Because I just listen every day, so I don't really know. If yeah, I... so we're putting out a lot right now, yeah. but it's just because a lot is on. It, we're so not always going to have that mm-hmm. schedule. But we're doing on our, our Little Miss Recap Extra, which is Patreon, Supercast, all the all that. Um, Su- Sister Wives Rewatch every Sunday. Yes. And then 90 Day of the Single Life every Tuesday. So Got that's it. happening there. Okay. And then our free feed, we have Couple to Thruple, Married mm-hmm. at First Sight, and we're doing Prison Brides. I have been listening oh, and to Love Prison is Blind. Brides. And what? Love is Blind. Oh, okay. And Prison Brides, I watched the first episode so I would know the characters, and then I just listened mm-hmm. to you guys for the rest of yeah. it. It's I'd... okay. Yeah. It's not great. I yeah. don't think they're going to get a season two. No, there's not enough. It, it needs a little more love after Trash. lockup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need some needs to be a slightly trashier. Yeah, absolutely. Little more drama. Yeah. Yeah. Give me it's my not. trash, TLC. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely, definitely check out Little Miss Recap. We'll have a link in our show notes. And I said this on your show and I'm saying it here. The only two shows I have like premium subscriptions for is Watch What Crappens and Little Miss Recap because you really Aww, do put out you. the best stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so make sure you check them out and support support Amy. Thanks. We appreciate it. And we love you guys. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll do it again and add some Enneagram and really just amp this up. Absolutely. We're all in on that one. Awesome. Definitely. All right. Everyone have a good week. We'll see you in two weeks. Same time, same place. Bye. Bye.